Hello everyone and welcome to a full test of my Enceladus NC2 resource utilization lander in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul. So this lander is going to drill for ice on Enceladus, the moon of Saturn, and convert it to hydrogen and oxygen. It is launching on this Orion carrier plane with the mini star recoverable second stage on its back. So this is a fully recoverable launch system, though uh, complicated because it is composed of two aircraft that need to land somewhere. I have tested this before in previous videos, so that is not a problem. The ca carrying capacity of this is 45 tons. The launch mass is about 1,400 tons. And we are bringing the 45 ton load into orbit and then we need to refuel this lander so that it can make its way over to Saturn. So right now it's underfueled in order to be able to be launched on this system. So there you see the lander, now that the fairing is gone, very barely clearing the mini star. The Orion carrier plane launches out of Tampico and lands at the Bahamas. I have again tested that in previous videos at the point where it separates the mini star it is going about 4,000 meters per second at the very limit of what could be done without exploding in Kerbal Space Program at that point. So here the mini star delivers the lander to orbit and the lander is going to wait for the refueler which is also 45 tons. I do check that the lander has enough delta V to get over to Saturn. It's a complicated situation though because only half of that burn is going to be done with the nuclear engine. The other half has to be done with an ion engine that will take days to do the rest of the transfer. And that introduces some inaccuracies in the burn. Anyway, this is the launch of the refueler which is carrying the extra hydrogen and oxygen for the transfer. If the lander was launched on a larger launcher, like the Space Launch System from NASA, then it could just be launched at one go. It doesn't need a 90 ton capacity, that's only because we also have the dry mass of this refueler tank. It probably can be done with 80 ton capacity. Anyway, so here we are, rolling over, and the Orion carrier plane completes its burn. There we go. Separates and the ignition of the engines on the mini star which are aerospike engines linear aerospike i had a little bit of a staging error there the fairings were not in the right spot because i used a different set of fairings for this particular payload to fit it a little bit better but off they go so the challenge here is to manage all of the business of getting over to enceladus while using the ion engines which now run off of liquid oxygen. Previously I had them running off of xenon, which is much more efficient. Liquid oxygen is preferable in this case because we can get it from Enceladus for sure, because Enceladus has water. Uh, xenon I have no idea where to get exactly when it comes to the outer planets as we complete the burn to make orbit and then start rendezvousing with the lander with this refueler. So yeah, we have less efficiency the xenon gas gets about 2,800 seconds of ISP, whereas the oxygen gets 2,200, and it also has less thrust, which is why I have double the ion engine mass. So the ion engine mass for the xenon gas was about 2.27 tons. The engine mass for the oxygen is double that, so more like 4.5 tons. All right, so docked and transferring the fuel into the lander. And then the refueler makes its way away from this. I wanted to deorbit it. It has RCS propellant to do that, but the RCS was too slow. It would have taken quite a long time to deorbit it. So I just moved it away for now and then proceeded with the transfer burn. We have about 4,500 meters per second with the nuclear engine that uses the hydrogen and we are consuming most of that before moving on to the ion engines which use the oxygen. But we do have to reserve some of the hydrogen in order to actually land on Enceladus. The ion engines aren't powerful enough to actually conduct the landing. The RCS is because Enceladus has very weak gravity but it's not so weak that ion engines can actually land on it. So here I am reserving some of the 
fuel in this stage for that landing. About 300 meters per second when we still have the oxygen for the ion engines, it'll end up being more than 300 when we get there without all the oxygen. And so now I'm replotting because, again, the ion engine burn is going to take many days, so we're going to have to sort of plot it far out. You can see I'm going to nudge it beyond the moon's orbit to get more realistic. And even though the initial burn, the initial plot was 7,500, we uh, now still have like 7,000 to do, even though we did 4,000 with the nuclear engine because ion engines are like that. <laughs> the, the ion engines, because you don't have the benefit of being close to Earth with the over-Earth effect. And it's not as accurate because you have a lot of radial components in order to get the orbit done. Uh, probably NASA would be able to do this ahead of time by angling out the orbit initially with the nuclear engine and then sort of correcting that with the ion engine. But yeah, anyway, a little bit more will be necessary. And I knew that and we are doing that. So here, thankfully, at least we get to do the ion engine burn with time warp. And here I'm plotting the mid-course correction. So you can see that's 300 meters per second. At least the mid-course correction doesn't have any inaccuracy because the orbit is relatively consistent at that point. There's no real inaccuracy. So that's okay. We can do that smoothly. And here, finishing that up with the RCS. Uh, the RCS does use the hydrogen, but it's hydrogen gas RCS, so we only get 220 seconds of ISP with it. So pretty bad. And we could probably bump that up to 260 and still have it be realistic. And I might consider that. All right. So then I plot out all the other burns that we're going to do around Saturn. And it seemed when I uh, summed it all up, we got a little bonus Titan encounter there, but it's not really helping. I summed up all the burns to get down to Enceladus's orbit, and it seemed like we have enough with the ion engine. The ion stage uh, has about 1,000 extra, but then we're going to lose some of that because the burns are not going to be done instantaneously. So here we are capturing around Saturn, and we'll blow right past periapsis because it takes so long to do this capture burn, even though it's about 600 meters per second, maybe even less than that. So yeah, way past periapsis and high up before we actually get a capture around the ringed planet. Well, there are plenty of other ringed planets, but it is the most famous ringed planet, so there. So that's what our capture looks like, and of course, with it tilted like that, we have to do uh, inclination correction to match with Enceladus. We have that plot higher up. Everything costs more than the initial plot. Uh, there is the hint of an encounter right there at Enceladus. There we got an uh, encounter with Enceladus, which we can't use, because, of course, to bring our orbit down to Enceladus level is about 4,000 meters per second, and we'll have to do that on multiple orbits something like uh, probably on the order of 8 to 10 orbits it takes to actually bring us down to there. The first one is easy. You can see that's a big chunk of the distance down. Uh, well, that's just the plot, though. We can't actually do that whole 600. We do about 400 to 500 each pass. Otherwise, it's too inaccurate, and then we're going to end up not having much margin left. In fact, I cut it pretty close as it is. You can see here we're down to 400 meters per second left, but fortunately our orbit is now very close to Enceladus's orbit. We have an encounter there, and we just need a little bit more here. But yeah, I used all the margin I had, basically. Entering Enceladus SOI, we already have a curved orbit around it, and we just need a little bit more to capture, but we only have 285 meters per second in the ion stage to do that with. But there, well, a little bit less than 50 does the trick. And here is the capture round in Zelda. So the whole lander system is very trim. Uh, along the way, I haven't been doing things super accurately. So there's margin, and I've been using it. I could probably do things a little bit more carefully, and it would cost less. So, here I'm plotting the landing burn, and again we're using the nuclear engine. Actually, I said that we'd have 
more than 300, but it's not a whole lot more than 300. Fortunately, orbital velocity around Enceladus is about 150, and so the 350 I think we had was enough. One reason that we didn't have that much more than 300 was because we've been using the hydrogen with the RCS system along the way. Uh, the ions aren't turning us, the RCS is turning us with the hydrogen. So, here we have landed with like 100 meters per second left, and I start drilling. And the drilling works, we've already tested that in the previous video, and so that's good, but there's a catch. It works at the fourth level of time warp, what I mean is the fourth triangle and the fifth triangle, and then explodes on the sixth level of time warp, which it was supposed to be able to do, and which I tested it at before, but it decided to overheat for some reason. So I had to stick to the fifth level of time warp, which I think is 10,000, right? 10, 100,000, yeah, 10,000 times in realism overhaul and real solar system uh, because it changes the time warp steps. And after a while, we did get all of the fuel topped off, hydrogen and oxygen. And in the game time, it took two months. So that's great because the target was six months. This particular location seemed to have better yield than the location I tested at. So we got replenished in two months. So that's fine. It's still in the right order of things. We don't want it to replenish within hours. It's a lot of fuel to drill for. Uh, two months is okay. A little bit faster will be fine too. So I test that the nuclear engine can bring the load up. Of course, we have to make sure that it can eventually refuel something with 400,000 liters of hydrogen. And it looks like we have plenty to spare. No problems there. It brings up 400,000 plus extra to run the RCS. And then I check how much we're going to have with the ion engines while carrying the hydrogen because previously the hydrogen was depleted first on the way out to Saturn. Uh, here we see that we have 8,000 meters per second with the ion engines, even while carrying the hydrogen, so that's good. And I check that we can eventually get this over to Titan, just in case our ship is over at Titan. That's a pretty normal mission. We'll have a ship over at Titan that needs to be replenished. And so I see that it can get out to Titan with the Delta V that we have, while still carrying the hydrogen that we're supposed to deliver, and matching orbits with Titan. We see, let's try and get that there, but it's ultimately about 6,000 meters per second to round out at Titan, and that's without any help from Titan's gravity, so no overth effect there. 6,000 meters per second will do the trick. So, that's great. We have a lander that will do what I want it to do, and with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.